Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbling crude. Oil, that is. Black gold. Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolk said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbillies. of food this time. That's food? Food and uh, other necessities. I don't know how we'd live without these packages from home, stuck out here in the middle of nowhere like this. Middle of nowhere? Lady, you're in Beverly Hills. You can buy anything here. You just walk into one of them hoity-toity stores in Beverly Hills and ask for possum livers and see how they look at you. Well, I... Possum livers. Hey, Meach, ready? Did Aunt Pearl send any teeth and bark for Bobby? Look and see, Ellie. Hey. I'm not hanging around here to see what comes out of there next. <laughs> oh, would uh, somebody sign this for me, please? <laughs> I don't think the company would accept your signature. <laughs> okay, okay, I'm going. I'm going. I uh, hope you enjoy your cab package. <laughs> oh, boy, crawdad! You want to stay and have some crawdad tails and some possum liver? I mean, he didn't hear you, Granny. <laughs> he sure don't know what he's missing. That's a fact. Listen to them crawdads thrashing around in that creek water. Well, you ain't Pearl sure did send some lively ones. There's three more pails of them in there. We sure got a dandy stock of crawdads now. You know, we ought to share some of these good things with our neighbors. Jethro, take this pail of crawdads over to the dry deal. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, just a minute, Jethro. Now, Jed, I'm all for sharing with the dry stems. But don't you think we ought to ask them to have a closed mouth as to where they got them? or we'll be trampled with crawdad-starved city folks. Word of caution wouldn't hurt. Yes, sir. <laughs> Mr. Lucas, to see you, Chief. Hi, Hi John. Milburn. Uh, listen, Milburn. Uh, listen. You are Jed Clampett's closest friend and confidant. Now, you've got to put me next to that financial wizard. Financial wizard? Jed Clampett? Well, yes. He gave Fleming Pendleton a tip on wheat futures last week, and Fleming has cleaned up. But that's ridiculous. Why, it is not. I was standing right here. Fleming said, what will I make if I buy a million bushels of wheat? And Clampett said he'd make plenty of bread. <laughs> Believe me, he did make $200,000. That, that was pure accident. He meant the kind of bread you eat. <laughs> now, we have been friends for a long time. 
We've always leveled with each other. Now, please, please, let me in on this clampered crawdad stock. John, he meant the kind of crawdad you eat. Oh, no, not that Now, again. please believe me, there's no such a thing as crawdad stock. Well, there's certainly none on the market, I'll grant you that. And I've gone to every exchange, even over the counter, and I've tried the foreign boards. Milburn, what is crawdad? <laughs> is it a new company? Is it a military project? An electronics breakthrough? A space vehicle? What is that? Come on, tell me, Milburn. Look, excuse me, Chief, Mr. Pendleton. Well, John, is Drysdale still our friend? Is he getting us together with J.D. Clampett, the Fox of Wall Street? Fox of Wall Street? Boys, please listen to me. J.D. Clampett thinks a market is just a place to buy victuals. Make a note of that. Vittles. Common or preferred? <laughs> Fleming, you'll never get anything out of him. He won't even tell me what crawdad is. <laughs> Just listen to them big old fat rascals splashing around in that creek water. <laughs> We're gonna have a fest tonight. How are you gonna cook them, Granny? Every way there is. We'll start out with crawdad soup and work our way right through to dessert. Crawdad pie. Hey, Granny! <laughs> Granny, you know that big old fat cook over to the Drysdales? Yeah. Well, he mean-mouthed you, so I dropped him upside the head. He mean-mouthed me after us sharing our crawdads? What happened, Jethro? Well, Mr. and Mrs. Drysdale wasn't home, so I gave him the bucket and says, here's a dandy bunch of fresh crawdad. And he says, crawdad? And I says, yeah, you know, fresh crawdad swimming around in creek water. But I says, Granny, I want you to keep quiet about it. And he says, must be a crab. So I thropped him. Ain't nobody gonna call you that while I'm around. Good for you. Now I'm gonna get the crawdads back and throp him. <laughs> I'll explain to Mr. Drysdale that you want to keep quiet. He'll understand. Boys, believe me. There's no such thing as crawdad stock. If there were, I'd let you in on it. We're friends. All right, Melbourne, I'll take your word. Oh, that's easy for you. You made your killing on Clampett's wheat tip. But I have yet to turn one red penny from that hillbilly Bernard Baruch. <laughs> Come on, John. Maybe he's telling the truth. Yeah, yes. Yes, I understand, Mr. Clampett. You're splitting your stock of crawdad with Mr. Drysdale, but you want him to keep it very hush-hush. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. right. Four tin cans from Pearl. Yes. Keep the crawdads in crick water until needed. Right. Thank you, Mr. Clappett. I'm sure Mr. Drysdale will be thrilled. Goodbye. Oh, gentlemen, I didn't see you. Oh, we, we, we didn't hear anything. Uh, not a thing. <laughs> You know something, Granny? These newspapers that Pearl uses for packing and wrapping is just about my favorite part of them packages from home. What's new, Jim? Anything exciting? You bet. Uh, look at that headline. Government puts three men on moon. No. Yep, says right here. Three government men have been put on the job of finding local still and cutting off the supply of moon being made hereby. <laughs> Granny, got my tablet and pencil. What you want figured? I want you to figure how we can make our stock of crawdads last for a month until we get our next package from whom? Reckon you can handle that, boy? I reckon. Uh, first, you find out how many days in the month. <laughs> then you put that into how many crawdads you got. Or less how many we give to the Drysdales, and that'll tell us how many we can have a day. Can you do all that? Well, sure, Granny. All it takes is addition, subtraction, and what you call long division. Mm. No wonder your ma wanted you to stay out here. Having an education like that at your age. <laughs> you know something, Uncle Jed? I've been thinking. I'm so good at ciphering and all. Maybe I ought to be a scientist. You know, like Albert Einstein, instead of a brain surgeon. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> Get over there and commence counting them crawdads. Yes, sir. Granny, I've put eight pearl sorghum into jars and scrubbed the can good and clean. Fine, Ellie. Now, you take it down to my still and fill it up with my moon... Uh, I mean, my rheumatiz medicine. <laughs> Granny, uh, what you want with that much rheumatiz medicine? Want to send it back home to Pearl. You just read where the government man is shutting off the supply back home. <laughs> Well, Granny, uh, that's right generous of you, but sending your white lightning back home might be sort of chancy. Eh, the government men will never suspicion it in a milk can. Well, what if somebody was to drop the can? Remember what happened when just one jug blew up on top of Skeeter Hill? Yeah. From then on, it was known as Happy Holler. <laughs> See, 
what you mean. Maybe I better figure out some way to jelly it. That seems like a safer way to handle it. Well, how are you coming with your crawdad figuring? Uncle Jed, you know it's awful difficult to count these rascals the way they splash around in this creek water. Ow! Ow! <laughs> Sure you weren't followed? Followed? Shh. John, what goes on? Fleming, we may have stumbled onto the most important projects in the development of the nuclear-powered submarine. You mean Crawdad? Crawdad. <laughs> and you found out what it is. I'm getting close. And no wonder it isn't listed on the stock exchange. It is a highly secret military project of enormous scope. Really? How did you find out? I didn't find out. I figured it out. Don't forget, I was in military intelligence during the war. <laughs> what is a duck? A duck? It's a bird that lives on land or water. It is also a military vehicle that lives on land or water. <laughs> what is a hound dog? It's a hunting dog that tracks game. It is also a military missile that tracks its game. <laughs> and that brings us to Crawdad. Well, there, you've got me. To be absolutely sure, I looked it up. It is a crayfish. Well, what is a crayfish? An armored amphibious crustacean capable of maneuvering on land, through the water, or under the water, along the bottom. <laughs> you mean that... Unless I miss my guess, Jed Clampett has developed and is manufacturing an amphibious machine of fantastic capabilities. <laughs> and that's crawdad. <laughs> figured out how many crawdad I can cook a day and make them last a month? I'm working on it, Granny, only it's hard. Because this here ain't the first of the month, so I gotta take an average. <laughs> uh, let's see. 30 days past September, April, June, and November. All the rest have 31, except February alone, which has got 28, until leap year makes it 29. And this here is leap year. Only it ain't February. <laughs> hey, look what I got. Hey, albino possum. Why, they're scarcer than hen's teeth. The critter doctor says that they ain't no more than three or four born out of every five or six hundred thousand possums. Thirty days goes into six hundred thousand possums. I'm counting possums. <laughs> You're supposed to be counting crawdads. Look at it. But, Granny, this here is high arithmetic. For all I know, it might even be algebra. What's algebra? It's something that Einstein done. Only I bet you he didn't have to do it with his kinfolk talking possum on him. <laughs> Ellie Mae, take your white possum outside. Then join me in the pantry while I try to gel my white lightning to send a pearl. Yes, I'm Greeny. Let's go, Mickey. Jethro, it's only three or four hours to supper, and I'd like to cook up 10 or 15 crawdad. Four hours goes into 15. Dean Crawdad. <laughs> Crawdad. <laughs> <laughs> Does that mean anything to you? Just crawdad printed vertically. Well, to me, understanding military terminology, here is what it means. Classified reconnaissance and weapon-capable deep-sea amphibious dread. <laughs> wow. And look at this. This is one of the things that Clampett mentioned to Jane Hathaway on the phone this morning. Does that mean anything to you? Nothing. Well, now, to me, it means that experiments are being conducted on the ocean floor off Hawaii under the protection of the United States Navy. Four tin cans from Pearl? Four destroyers from Pearl Harbor. John, this is big. Really big. And we're going to be in on the ground floor. Where does Clampett make these crawdads, out here? Oh, no, no, not that wily old fox. He's got a plant hidden somewhere way back in the hills, a place called uh, Crickwater. Crickwater? Remember? 
that's something else that Clampett told Miss Hathaway this morning. Keep the crawdads in Crickwater until needed. <laughs> but where is it? I, I've never heard of it. No one has. Mark my words. Find Crickwater and you'll find crawdads. <laughs> Well, there's no sign of a creek water any place. It's one of those secret towns like Oak Ridge or Los Alamos. <laughs> but someday it'll be more famous than both of them put together. <laughs> That'll be the express driver. Who? Oh, I've been doing some checking. A very large package was delivered to the Clampets this morning. <laughs> Who is it? Harry Ledge, Express Company. Mr. Lucas? Hey, hey, what's the idea? What's going on? We just want to ask you some questions about a package you delivered this morning. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't give up that kind of information to anybody but my employer. Uh, what did you want to know, boss? Uh, where did that package come from? Package come from? Oh, I remember them saying it came from, from home, back in the hills. Oh, did they say what was in it? Yeah, food. Food? Obviously a cover-up. A man worth $40 million doesn't need a food package from home. Did you hear the name Crawdad mentioned? Uh, yes, sir, I did. How about Pearl? Yeah, I remember them saying something about that, too. Listen, you fellas want me to go back up there and get some more information? We think you could. Well, that happens to be my real line of work, private investigating. You're a detective? Well, not yet. I don't have my own office or license, but I do a lot of studying. In fact, every day I practice following cars without them noticing me. In an express truck? It ain't easy. <laughs> Listen, I gotta go back there to get another signature for my way bill. Besides, they invited me back there for supper. Well, he certainly has the entree. Oh, I'll get you a real report. I got a photographic memory. Okay, okay. See what you can find out, Mr. Ledger. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, uh... Uh, by the way, when I'm doing private investigating, I put an S on my name. Ledgers. No, no, up front, up front. Sledge. Harry Sledge. Just like Mike Hammer, except I'm more the brainy type. I use my head. <laughs> See you, fellas. Brainy, that's the closet. <laughs> I was uh, just casing it. See you, fellas. <laughs> Fleming, I have a feeling we just made our first mistake. Letting him go to the Clampets. Letting him out of the closet. <laughs> According to my cook, Jethro took a poke at him for absolutely no reason. It doesn't sound like Jethro. He's such a sweet boy. Now, don't get emotional. We're here to ferret out the facts and place the blame squarely where it belongs, on my cook. What makes you so sure? Miss Hathaway, cooks I can get by the dozen. Depositors with $40 million are not so easy to come by. <laughs> Looks as though the Clampets are receiving a large gift from someone. If it's Hacker from the Merchant's Bank trying to steal their account, I'll... Look... Hi. What is it, driver? What do you want? Do you have something for the Clampets? Well, as Mike Hammer would say, who's asking? I am Milburn Drysdale. Big deal. See him! The name is Sledge. Harry Sledge. Well, mind your manners, Sledge. Button your lip, beautiful. No! <laughs> you should be reported to your company. I'm sorry, doll. I, uh, I got carried away. What are you delivering here? Uh, nothing. I just got to get a signature from one of the Clampets. Then take it around back to the tradesman's entrance. Okay, Mac. See you later, gorgeous. <laughs> Impertinent fellow. Yes. Oh, you mean yes? Yes. Uh, out of there, Miss Jane, Mr. Drysdale. Come right in. I hope you'll stay to supper. Granny's gonna fix crawdad. Quick as Jeff throw figures how many. He's adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing, and beat the bane. <laughs> well, speaking of the lad, my cook tells me that Jethro was responsible for a slight altercation. I wouldn't be surprised. That boy does every kind of ciphering there is. Uh, 
Hi. Howdy. You pert near made me drop this. And if I had, it would have blown us all to kingdom come. What is that? A white light. You government man? Oh, no. I'm from the express company. I brought your package from home, remember? Oh, yeah. My eyes kind of missed it up from the fumes. This is powerful stuff. Uh, uh, what is it? Promise not to tell? It's my white lightning. I gotta figure out how to jelly it up to send it to Pearl. Jethro? Jethro, your Uncle Jed's calling you. Yeah, Granny. Have you figured out how many crawdads we can take out of that crick water every day? Not yet, Granny. But I'm getting there. Regular Einstein, that boy. <laughs> Set a spell. I gotta get on with this experiment. The government's already put three men on the moon. They're liable to put more. <laughs> and that he don't gobble up little Mickey here. That's, uh... That's Mickey. Yeah, ain't he cute? Uh, oh... I'll say, he's, uh, he, he's, he's cute. Well, uh, see you, lady. Password. Quick water. <laughs> Sit down, Fleming. We're just finishing the debriefing. John, you're as white as a sheet. You will be, too, when you hear what I've heard. What is it? Fleming, that classified reconnaissance and weapon-capable deep-sea amphibious dredge is just one of the fantastic projects under development by the Clampett Combine. Clampett Combine? Four scientific geniuses. Am I right, Sledge? Please, Ledge. After what I saw today, I'm going back to truck driving. <laughs> what is it? What are they up to? The moon. What? Word of honor. And do you know who invented the rock fuel that put them there? Granny. That little old lady. Greatest chemist since Eve Curie. And the boy. He's a regular Einstein. Greater. Greater. He invented a new system of mathematics. Why, two and two come out five for him. <laughs> but the wildest is what the girl is up to. Oh, she has uncovered secrets of genetics that are unbelievable. Tell him about the kitten she developed. This high. This cow. Tell him about the white mouse. This big. I don't want to hear anymore. We've opened a door that should have been left closed. I'm with you, gentlemen. As good, loyal Americans, I think we should take an oath that the secrets of Jed Clampett's awesome experiments will never leave this room. I swear, I swear. <laughs> Fellas, I'd just like to say one thing. It's a mighty good feeling to know that they're on our side. <laughs> Time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. And they would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. 
You all come back now, dear. This has been a Filmways presentation.